Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Soulful Abundance with Chris Williams. I'm super excited to share with you my next guest, Tammy Cho. Tammy and I got to meet each other actually at a amazing event in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And Tammy, I'm just so glad to have you here and share your brilliance. We got to chatting at dinner and I'm like, oh, I definitely need to have you on my podcast. So welcome. I'm really, really glad to have you. Yeah. Thank you for having me here. I felt the same way, just connecting with our energy. So I'm so happy to be here. Yay. So let me give you a little introduction of Tammy and her work. So she is a former patient care leader turned international bestselling author and speaker. And she also does face and body analysis. She's an expert in that and a chief energy officer. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. um, Tammy empowers leaders to embrace their authentic self leadership and energy so they can expand their capacity to receive greater connection, abundance and flow in their authentic connections business, income, and impact. Woo! Yes, we can all use more of that. This is fantastic. And so some of the modalities that I'm really excited to get into is, um, you know, your face and body analysis, neuroscience, human mm -hmm. design, you do NLP, EFT, shamanism, metaphysical laws, like it sounds like you've got such a beautiful, brilliant toolbox to kind of pull everything together. And you've been featured on um, Positive Impact TV, Brains Magazine, Bold Journey Magazine, and Fox, ABC, CBS, NBC, AP News. Holy cow, you're a superstar. <laughs> yeah, thank you. We, we try to put our best stuff in the bio, but at the end of the day, I just want people to experience my energy. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. 1000%, 1000%. So tell me, um, where would you like to start? What feels most exciting for you to share with our audience, um, women who want to take aligned energy and be in that heart centered space while also building and growing their business? Any? Yeah, thank you. Thank you for asking that question that way. And it, it does feel um, good to start with a bit of my story just so people yeah. could really meet me. Um, and so, um, yeah, I, it, it starts off with, you know, I used to be a nurse for 20 years. I worked from bedside to um, being a supervisor, overseeing the beds and who gets the beds, um, moving patients out of emergency up, up to the beds, right? And um, I essentially burned out one day where I had like chest pain and heart palpitations that radiated up my jaw down my arm. And I was really struggling to breathe, Chris, and I actually got wheeled off um, in front of everyone in a, a to emergency. Wow. And so, yeah, that really uh, dropped me to my knees in many ways to really, you know, um, cause I was holding this big persona of needing to have everything put together and doing things well and really caring at the expense of myself, um, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and it slowed me down, Chris, but it, it really, you know, my awakening, so to speak, didn't happen until I had, you know, my six month old daughter and she was lying there in one of those baby Einstein mats. And for the first time she hit one of the hanging toys intentionally. And often moms will be really ecstatic and excited. Yeah. And, and I wasn't, you know, and, and if it wasn't for this community nurse that um, was sitting next to me at this exact moment on my living room couch, I wouldn't have known how disconnected I was to my own child. Wow. And so, yeah. And, and, you know, what I realized is that I was like, um, subconsciously replaying what happened to me between me and my mom, where she left me when I was baby, wow. I wasn't physically abandoning my daughter, but I was emotionally abandoning her. Yeah. So, um, yeah, these cycles were playing out in my life. And obviously I put my foot down. I wasn't going to let that replay when I had that realization. So we all have angels in our life and that, that nurse in my living room really awakened me, you know? Um, and I, I started trying to master the mind and doing the whole, whole personal development, obviously therapy and all these things, right. Um, became an NLP practitioner and grand masterminds. I became a millionaire at that point in my thirties. Um, but I realized that I was still struggling. I, I still felt anxiety and depression and I was chronically burning out still. And I'll, and this is one of the reasons why I, when I build my business now, it's a non-negotiable to not fall into that crap again. Yes. And so from that space, like mastering my mind, I went into energy work and took a variety of healing modalities and, um, being a practitioner and, um, Reiki, um, shamanism, bow energy healing, um, various ones. And I knew I was exchanging healings two to three times a week, Chris. Wow. And I, when I stopped, I, I realized all the sensations were still there. Mm. So I knew that it was not enough. Like mm. it wasn't 
I wasn't hitting the spot. Right. Um, and so, you know, my values are very much truth and freedom. Mm-hmm. And so I kept on venturing on my journey and I dived into uh, four years of emotional and spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. Um, and came across psychosomatics, which is the study of the body, mind, heart, soul together, Mm -hmm. as it's expressed through our physical body or facial features, how we, um, breathe, how we walk, how our posture is like, like, uh, the lines on our face, Mm -hmm. um, every is expressing everything within ourselves. And so I realized it wasn't about, you know, addressing ourselves in these separate ways, Um, it was bringing it all together and through my own body, I saw how I was yearning for love and connection Mm -hmm. and parts of my body was pushing it away. Mm -hmm. And, and Chris, this is this dynamic I see in a lot of my clients. And, um, this is why I'm passionate about helping someone open to receive themselves Mm -hmm. because in many ways, when we're pushing away parts of ourselves, oftentimes that's, that's the block. Like we achieve certain amount of success, but if we're not letting in these deeper parts of ourselves, oftentimes energetically, we're pushing it away. Yeah. And so, um, and to bring this together for me, energy healing is not just energy, you know, it's actually taking consideration, the body, mind, heart, soul connection. Mm. And through that space of deepening and aligning in our bodies, we actually can then really authentically express who we are. We're bringing, we're not ignoring this part of us and, and, you know, um, um, showing up well on that side. Mm -hmm. And so when I do the face analysis with people, it really highlights this because one side of our face, the left side is actually our our private world. Mm -hmm. And the other side is the public face that we show people. And so I just, um, feel like this is such a beautiful gift to help people see tangibly what is happening within themselves. Mm. Um, yeah. And so this is why I do what I do now. That's fascinating. Um, Holy cow. I want to hear more like, you know, with the, what do people, once people understand what, you know, the, the reading is on their face, like, what do they do with that information? Um, well, it's, it's, I, I like to say it's not, I, I, you know, I don't like to do face readings in the sense of giving people information of what their eyes mean or what their mouth means, because right. people receive it at an intellectual level. Right. And for me, it's really about holding space for someone to literally in the moment drop into their heart and their body to actually receive it. Because um, there's parts that are subconscious on our face, mm-hmm. but there's parts that, you know, we're fearful from running away from. Sure. And so um, it's uh, it's a process to, of self-recognition to really connect and actually feel ourselves again in a way that we may know things, but we brush it off and that's what gets held in the body. Mm-hmm. And so, so yeah, it is the, in, in the analysis, analysis in itself is to bring someone deeper into themselves. Mm-hmm. And from that place, that's when we go into the deeper layers of what is their body and face telling me about what is exactly um, the focus that's needed because sometimes we feel scattered in all these places. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it's important to, um, actually address the root and where their, um, soul mission in many ways, like through, I also do numerology through the face mm-hmm. and it highlights places where our soul's mission and why it's showing up maybe in some area of our face where it's more darker or, mm-hmm. um, there's more lines on conflicts within self. Mm-hmm. And so really it's, it's, um, using the body to identify, um, bringing to the, the soul mission, also the emotional parts that someone may not have ventured into. Cause oftentimes we run away from our emotions mm-hmm. and that's a huge part of energy alignment is to learn how to lead our emotions mm-hmm. and to develop that emotional empowerment. Mm-hmm. So, um, a lot of my clients will say, I never know what to expect from you. Cause, and then I go into these different what, non-linear ways that addresses what exactly needs to be addressed. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, to, to answer your question, it has a lot to do with what the body is guiding me. I use obviously energy and see what is coming up and flowing, mm-hmm. but I'm also a big truth teller. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna uh, bring people to the, the door of truth, so to speak, because I find sometimes we run around it and we're not really bringing, going right to the door of it. Mm-hmm. And, that's how I create the most transformation for someone to not just be in my feminine energy of holding a non-judgmental space um, and caring, right? But it's really helping someone um, step into my masculine energy of really uh, calling it out in a loving way. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is sort of like a, a bit of an overview. Um, I hope I answered your question there. 
<laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I'm just curious about, you know, when, um, you know, when people do uncover, you know, which part of the themselves that they're blocking and actually get more in alignment with that, like, how do you see that? in um, the benefit of expanding their capacity and being able to, you know, create more abundance in their life and more, you know, authentic connections and, and impact in their business. I'm just curious how that yeah. happens. Yes, for sure. And so I'll just speak about one of my clients who essentially came to me and she came to me actually, um, you know, we were just in conversation and she wanted to create more space in her life. Like, Things were, she was creating a community, um, building her business and, you know, she's married, had a son and she felt, um, you see through her eyes that she felt, she looked um, almost like kind of dead in her life, even though on the outside, she was showing up very strong and confident and one of someone of authority. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. And oftentimes I find when people come work with me, they have challenged describing exactly what they feel is stuck. Sometimes it's very pronounced in the sense of income. Um, but other times it's essentially feeling like a disconnection, like they they have the income, but they also feel like they're hitting some sort of level. Mm. And so when we do this work, uh, oftentimes what we're doing is building a deeper uh, connection and intimacy with themselves. Mm -hmm. And when they are opening up these inner doors, um, they'll notice that all the strategies or mindsets that they have been focusing on, it naturally starts to work. And so they'll notice more flow in, in clients, uh, or they'll notice more flow in um, opportunities that are coming in. Mm -hmm. um, they'll feel like a deeper connection to um, their, their husband and um, developing that deeper connection with their son. And it, it's almost like this energetic opening that starts to happen. And they, um, this client told me she experienced love and abundance for the very first time. Like, she always knew it, um, thought she knew it, but is at a very intellectual level. Right. And so, and yeah. And so when she experiences it's it was the first time in the, you know, 35 years old she was right. And so this was a big opening. And, and so I think what is important to realize here is that it's difficult to create what we don't have a emotional connection or embodiment of. Mm -hmm. And so um, what I find is uh, people are, are going out there and creating various results, but there's another part of them that is, is being neglected and that will reflect directly in what's happening in the outside world. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing with it is it's again, like I'm using the body as a way to consistently identify what's happening. So we do follow up ones to see how the face shifted mm -hmm. and to, to look at what, what shifted and what we need to work on next. Mm -hmm. And so that provides a bit of a, roadmap and I want to empower my clients to definitely step into that place um, mm -hmm. and so they know that when they're um, having a sore throat or they're getting extremely um, itchy on their skin or they're noticing that they keep like kind of tilting to one side they're mm -hmm. they're realizing what's happening and they're like realizing subconsciously where they may be in their own way mm -hmm. and of course correct from that level mm -hmm. so it's it is a deepening of their capacity to open and receive Mm -hmm. um, of also shifting their alignment in their body because our, our, how we walk shows us if we're on purpose, um, with our mission and on direction with it. Mm -hmm. And so they have a gauge to, um, feel empowered in, within their body, um, to stay connected within themselves. And then we move into a process where I support them in building a new identity, mm -hmm. um, and state of being, um, cause everything is created from our, our beingness and yeah. our state of being. And some, some of us, we don't have that pattern developed in our, ourselves. And so I support someone in that to um, build that within themselves um, and learn the flow of emotions really. Because, um, um, well, I'm not sure if you, I think Chris, we talked a little bit about human design. Yeah. Um, but essentially um, uh, human design um, speaks of 50% of the population actually being emotionals, which means we're naturally going to be emotional. And what happens, people get trapped in this essence of um there's something wrong I'm feeling down uh, whereas yeah. this is actually a natural part of being and so I tend to attract a lot of emotionals and so when I talk about state and being um there's also this um emotional empowerment of really accepting all parts of ourselves whether that's the emotions that are coming in the body acceptance the body image gets addressed mm -hmm. um when all this comes into alignment 
people, it, it really comes back to, I feel like everything's flowing. And it's, it's like coming back to supporting um, my client and deciding what she wants. Mm. Cause there are, it's, it's the skill of realizing that people like um, they realize at one point that they are able to um, they think that they're deciding, but they're really not deciding at the level. And so I'm really helping people expand their capacity and step into their, their power and authentic self-leadership to actually um, decide um, and like a bigger, bigger visions for themselves. Because mm-hmm. um, sometimes the, the, the energy is open, um, but then it comes down to building the identity. So it's almost like a expanding Mm-hmm. and uh, shrinking spanning and shrinking and that's how life actually operates mm-hmm. so it's just really teaching people that the, the flow of life mm-hmm. is happening so let's go for this ride in a way that you know it's not going to knock us over like we see that this is the normal flow yeah. and through that love and acceptance and stepping in our power around it yeah and so so yeah I I I, I'm sorry if I went off a tangent there. No, this is I answered perfect. your question. No, that yeah. was perfect. That was perfect. I'm just, um, you know, this is so good because this conversation around state of being is is so important. And I'm so glad that, you know, we're, we're getting more leaders like you to talk about it. And especially as it relates to business, right? It's not just strategy. There has to be this combination of who it is that you're being energetically, as well as the thoughts that you have going on and, and, and what you are embracing and taking the action from that place is going to be very different when you've been able to, you know, tap into whatever the blocks are there and and create this new state of being so that you can have what it is that you want versus being in the old state of being and just trying to pull the levers on strategy, which is just doesn't work. (laughs) It just doesn't work. It doesn't work well. Right. Yeah. 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 And really old masculine way that I think we've been taught of just the masculine method of action, 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 action versus yes, action is important, but let's create the state of being first, because when, when we are creating from this state of being, then the actions work better. Yeah, this is exactly it. Cause like a yang follows the yin, like we actually need to create that, um, Mm. the state of being and that really deep knowing within herself and that trust, self-trust, right. Yeah. About what's coming in and then, and then to lead the show in that way. So it's like in alignment, right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's interesting, the state of being like, I mean, there's different ways to, you know, achieve it. Like I, I use a lot of NLP, like sometimes it's tapping into, um, um, certain past lives to bring it back in. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's all within us at the end of the at end, of, at the end of the day. Um, and, it's, it's really learning to step into self-leadership again and again, because if I think back on my whole journey, like even with like energy work, how I was like doing all these strategies, um, but it, it, it didn't, it, I actually um, did bowel energy healing. And I felt like, for example, all my depression, anxiety was gone that week. But when um, uh, deep down, I didn't think I was worthy of it. Mm. And so because of that, I was recreating that. And it's the weirdest thing is that I've always been very intuitively aware. I was uh, even conscious I was doing that, but Mm. I was, I had a pattern that I was aware, where where I'm aware of things, but I don't take action. Mm. So um, that was, you know, my own little thing that I, I, I worked through and um, realized that it comes down to our ability to open and receive based on our level of worthiness. And it's very subconscious. Yeah. Um, So I think that's a piece I like to go for right away, um, you know, right away as much as possible. I know that it's not always about just go down there and get things done because there's yeah. a melting away, you're right, unveiling of oneself. Um, and yeah, and I, 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 I work with a lot of clients that are high achievers already, right? So it's not that they don't have a lot of skills and they're not competent in many ways, but it's like when it comes to the emotional inner being, I find that it's so foreign mm-hmm. and it's no, no fault of, you know, anyone. It's like, that's how, as a society, we, yeah. it, it's happening and it's, and I'm, I want to build more like my podcast that's coming up. is going to be called authentic leaders rising. I really want to build this moment, this momentum for um, leading leaders that I think are feeling this way, mm-hmm. maybe taking action in it. Right. But to really build that um, more and more out there that, we, we live in a society that's going against all that. 
Mm-hmm. So we, we need more and more leaders that are yeah. going to stand for who they are and to put themselves out there and to yeah, shine their light. And so, yeah, so this is, the, I, I, you know, the burnout um, and moving on to, you know, uh, freedom, whatever you want to call it, it's almost a whole evolution. It's like, if we are able to support ourselves to navigate burnout, overdoing, um, drain, however you like to identify that within ourselves, because I find a lot of high achievers don't really realize how burned out they are. Mm-hmm. And when we learn how to address and deal with all of that, it's almost like you're actually on the evolution of your soul journey anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And to me, I feel like that's, that's big part of my mission here to help someone navigate that because of what I've gone through. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So beautiful. I'm so glad that you're bringing this work to the world because we definitely need it. And you're right. We're not, we're actually not even taught that right? We're, we're taught more to be emotionally reactive than actually be able to be emotionally resilient, to actually navigate and, and trust our emotions versus being afraid of them. Or again, just reacting, right? Like I know nobody sat me down and said, this is, this is how you deal with this, right? You're just like fear, Mm. you react to fear or happiness, you react to happiness, right? It's this state of reaction in life versus that empowerment of making the decision on how you're going to respond. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 so true. And I I really like speaking about um, you know, going within, it sounds like such a cliche in many ways, but it's mm-hmm. like there's something about deepening into ourselves that helps us come into our power just more and more, like more space and presence we create for ourselves, it opens up more space to receive. And so when I tell my clients to slow down, then let's try to break things down, not pack your schedule full, you know, that's when the flow often happens. Right. And so um, between, you know, maybe what we've heard um, in Dr. Hawking's book about power and force, yeah. that's the best example that I could experience or express it is that when we deepen into ourselves, it's, we start to, we start to bring this unison of our inner power uh, and our self-worth. Um, because we really know ourselves and the self-trust is deeper mm. and we realize who we truly are versus who we're not. Mm. And, and that's when things open up in our life, in mm. our inner being first and then in our life. And whereas going into the force is, is yeah, you can. And that's the, that's the challenge is that it, it does work to some level until yeah. you hit a block. Yep. So oftentimes those are the people that seem to be drawn to me, which is perfect. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I feel so blessed to be able to work with people in this way. Amazing. Well, you have a gift for people today. Will you share a little bit about what you are, um, what we get to gift? And by the way, you can get this in the description. The link is in the description of our podcast today. So you can grab this amazing thing from Tammy that she's going to tell us about. Yeah, I love to. Um, so something I've created that I uh, feel very proud and happy about um, because it, it will support people with this inner awakening. And I'm, I'm calling it Lead Your Authenticity. Um, mm-hmm. It's a face analysis five-part video series. And essentially, it will help you, um, yeah, um, open, create an opening and awakening in yourself. I hope you see in your leadership, where are your capacities in your leadership? how uh, how you may or may not be expressing it, your level of self-awareness in those areas within self. Mm -hmm. Um, But it also supports you to begin to align those inner and outer energies within ourselves. And so that it really supports you to empower and elevate your self-leadership. And so, um, yeah, I'd love to give that to your audience, um, Chris. (laughs) I can't wait to get it. Oh, I'm super excited. Thank you so much. That's fantastic. Yeah, you're so welcome. Yeah. So where can people connect with you, Tammy? I know we can get the freebie. What is the best place if people are like, oh my gosh, I really want to learn more about this. I want to connect with Tammy. How can we find you? Yeah, definitely. Um, um, I would just put out, let's go to my website, a path to the heart. So exactly, um, well, maybe they can't read the bottom of the screen, but essentially path to the heart.com um, mm-hmm. is my website. Um, and so that's somewhere you can reach me, find out more about me and Yeah. I'd love to hear from you. Amazing. And we will definitely, that'll be in your, just in the description too. So you can definitely check that out, that link. So grab the freebie, connect with Tammy and um, gosh, this was such an incredible conversation. I cannot wait to, to connect with you again, Tammy. And so glad that you and I are, are soul sisters in this amazing community and, and bringing this work to the world. And, and um, just so grateful that you're here with me today. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate you.
Absolutely. All right, everybody, we will see you next time. Again, don't forget to click the links in the description and connect with Tammy and we will see you soon. Bye.